So now that you have a basic understanding of what a vector is and how it's different than a scalar, the next step that we're going to tackle in this second note is how do we actually combine these vectors together in a mathematical way? And the main two ways we do that are through addition and subtraction. And in particular, addition is going to be an incredibly important concept that we will do with vectors. And the first thing that we're going to talk about actually is just a little mathematical trick to keep in mind. And I alluded to this a little bit in our first note. And it's that any vector could be turned around. In other words, its direction changed in the exact opposite direction if we also change the sign on the magnitude. So magnitude, that amount, that value, doesn't just always have to be positive. We could also make that value negative, and then suddenly it refers to a vector that's pointing in the exact opposite direction it was before. So we could state a vector as 3.5 kilometers west, but that's exactly the same as if we called that vector negative 3.5 kilometers to the east. And the same if we have 4.8 meters per second south, so there's a velocity vector that's in the south, south direction. We could also call that negative 4.8 meters per second to the north. So we'll just keep that mathematical trick in mind, and it'll help us with some of our calculations. But before we even know how to do those calculations, we need to know how to set up our diagrams and our situation here. And we can draw these diagrams by using a few simple rules and facts. And one of them is that we can combine multiple vectors together into larger ones. And to do this, we just remember that we can actually pick up and move these vectors around the page in any order that we want. So if we have the two vectors that you see there, what we are calling vector A and vector B, we can arrange them in what we call a tip-to-tail fashion. That's the most common form that we're going to see, and we're going to use that tip-to-tail strategy a lot. And so that's what you're seeing in this first diagram here. We've taken the two vectors, and we've connected them at this point here, where the tip of the first vector, vector A, is right connected to the tail of the second vector, vector B. But we don't have to put the A first and then the B vector second when we do tip to tail. We could have drawn the B vector first, as we did here, and connected its tip with the tail of A. As long as those vectors are still pointing in the same directions that they were before, we still connected them in a proper tip to tail fashion. But in some cases, we'll also see that we might want to just draw these vectors tail to tail. And we'll eventually get into when that's most useful to us. It's a little bit more rare. But in this case, this is all we mean, where you can see at this juncture here, we have the two vectors that we had before, A and B, and they're connected to one another with their two tails touching. If we look first, though, at adding these vectors, just erase that. Specifically when we add them, and we'll start with just 1D, meaning one dimensional, all along one line. When we're adding them, we need to arrange them in a tip-to-tail fashion. That's why I said the tip-to-tail method is something we're going to use a lot more, because that's what we'll use for adding vectors. And to start with, not always, but to start with, we're going to draw these vectors to scale and see what we can learn by drawing them to scale. So in this first example, keeping it as simple as possible, Alice walks five kilometers east, then turns around and walks seven kilometers west. What's her final displacement? Well, first of all, we start with a little scale. So we could say something like maybe one centimeter on your page can represent one kilometer that she would walk in real life. And that way you can just draw a certain number of centimeters to represent each vector. And of course, we need a little direction axis as well. So we remind anyone that's looking at our solution that we are referring to these typical directions. Let's try that again. North, east, south, and west are our typical directions. And so if we want a vector that points in the eastern direction, that means on our page we'll just make sure it's a vector that points towards the right. A western vector will point back towards the left. And I'm going to cheat a bit and use my straight line tool to help me do this. You can just use a ruler drawing it on your page. And so I'll draw a vector that will represent five centimeters long, which is actually representing five kilometers to the east. And then arranging that tip to tail, so starting from 
the tip of that vector, I'm going to arrange the tail of the next vector, which is the seven kilometers to the west. So I want a vector drawn seven centimeters long straight back in the opposite direction. So I'll just make mine a little bit underneath so it doesn't overlap completely. But starting from just below, I'm going to draw a vector that goes a little bit further in that direction. And normally it would line up exactly tip to tail. I've just drawn mine slightly below so that you can see that they are, in fact, different vectors. And so the top one is representing five kilometers. The bottom one is representing seven kilometers. And we can see, then, if we want to find her final displacement, remember that's just the straight line distance from your start to your finish. So your straight line distance from start to finish, or the displacement, in other words, is going to be this dotted line that I can start from here and draw right to the end of where we finish. So this here is my displacement vector, which for now, I'm just going to use the D once again with a little hat on top. As we get more into talking about the definition for displacement in more detail, we will eventually actually call it delta D or change in D. But we'll get into that in more detail later on. For now, though, you can kind of see where we're going with this. We drew these all to scale so that if you wanted to know the displacement, you could literally just measure its length on your page and work out what its scale is. So if you measure its length on your page, you'll get that it's two centimeters long, which is representing two kilometers in real life. We also know that it points to the left, which means that it is a western vector. So we know from measuring it as a scale diagram that it should be two centimeters or two kilometers long, but we can also figure this out mathematically. You probably realize now that we didn't have to draw this as a scale diagram. We just start by doing that when we're learning these things brand new to try and understand what's really going on. But now we can think a little more mathematically without doing pure measurement. So if we want to think of this as a calculation, our displacement which remember will be a D with a little hat on it, we can calculate that as being our two vectors literally added together. So just for a little notation so you can see what I'm doing, I'm going to call the first one the five kilometers east. I'll write it up here. I'm going to call that vector A. And the second one I'm going to call vector B, just to kind of use that same letter notation we saw up top. And so really what I'm literally doing is adding vector A with vector B. And because these are vectors, we do need a diagram to at least help us map out what's going on. But if we understand what directions they're going in, we can then do a little bit of math work. And as we talked about, any vector that's in one direction can be the negative magnitude in the exact opposite direction. And so if I let east represent my positive direction, that means anything to the west will be negative. And then I can do this purely mathematically. I can write a statement like positive five kilometers being added with negative seven kilometers. And I know that that's negative seven kilometers because it's seven kilometers west. And that's the opposite to the positive direction. And now just using what we know from math, when we add a negative, it's really like we're subtracting. So we do kind of five subtract seven, and that gives us negative two kilometers. But really what that means is negative two kilometers in the direction that we've called positive, which is negative two kilometers east. So what does that really mean? So for your notes, we can kind of write that question. What does that mean that we got a negative? Well, it means really our final answer, which I'll write with a little therefore statement, is therefore our displacement, we'll take away the negative and call it two kilometers now, but we'll write in square brackets a direction that tells us what that negative sign means. West. So two kilometers to the west. For our second example now, we've got a car that's being pulled out of a ditch by two tractors. The first tractor pulls with a force of 1,850 newtons. And so there's our first case where we're seeing force being represented. And that capital N doesn't mean north in this case. That's the unit 
and it's measured in newtons, named after Isaac Newton, and that's just the way that we measure force. It's the unit of an amount of force. And then the F in square brackets, that's the direction. It means forward, 1850 newtons forward. And the second tractor is 1400 newtons, also in the forwards direction. They're both pulling together, pulling forwards. And we're trying to find the force on the car. So once again, we use our very incredible art skills and we draw a diagram of this. So here is my ditch, and here is my very beautiful, accurate drawing of what this truck must look like. Again, in physics, it doesn't really matter how beautiful your drawings are, as long as we can represent it. So this truck is trying to get out of the ditch, and then once again, I'll use my straight line tool so we can draw nice straight lines to represent these vectors. And in this case now, I'm not even going to bother with a scale because I really don't need to draw a scale diagram, as we saw. As long as I can understand what directions things are going in, that'll tell me how I can either add or subtract things using pure math instead of just scale measurement. So if I draw first a line just to diagram this out, I'm going to draw a nice vector to represent the 1850 newtons. And then also coming off of it, really it's going in the exact same direction, I'm just going to draw it a little bit below so you can see that it's a different vector, one that's going to represent about 1400. So it should be fairly long as well, just not quite as long. And I'll label those so I don't forget which is which. This is 1850 newtons, the other one is 1400 newtons, and they're both going in what I'm going to call the forwards direction. And we're trying to find the net force on the car. And net force is something that we'll see a lot in our second unit, but it's a fancy word. It really just means total, or when all of the forces are put together. So we're trying to find total force on the car, and now we can write a statement for that pretty easily. We can make a statement something along the lines of F net. So first of all, the F stands for force. I put a little arrow on it because it's a true vector version of force. And the little subscript, net, tells me that it's a total force that I'm looking for. And that's going to be equal to the two forces added together. So again, I'm going to label this first force as F1. And this second force, I'm going to call F2. And that just gives me an easy way that I can say that F1 added with F2 will give me my total overall force, my net force, which is what I want. And even though I don't have a scale diagram, the fact that I can see they're both pointed in the same direction allows me to just do straight addition in order to figure them out. And they're both pointed in what I can call the positive direction. So I'm really just adding two positive numbers together. It's as simple as that. But I'm going to be really redundant about that just so you can really remind yourself that these are both positive vectors. I'm putting the positive sign in front of each number, which is what's making it a vector quantity. I don't always need to write its direction in square brackets beside, because I've got a plus sign in front of each, which is telling me that they're both going in what I've called the positive direction. When I add both of those together, though, we get 3,250, and specifically, positive 3,250 newtons. And so when I write a therefore statement, I'm not going to even write a full sentence, but I can just write something simple like therefore f net is equal to 3,250 newtons. And again, I've run out of space, so I'm going to write my square brackets underneath forwards. Again, now we're seeing that even though scale diagrams are helpful, they're not always needed. We're now at the point where we can just do this purely mathematically. So now if we're dealing with the situation where we actually have what we call vectors in 2D or two dimensions, we still follow all the same rules. We try and, try and draw a vector diagram using our tip to tail rules. And then we just try and see what our displacement line, or our total force line, or whatever it is that we're trying to find, what that new vector needs to look like, what the sum of those two vectors is going to be. But we can first do it through a diagram. So here I've got a fishing ship. So again, a very beautiful diagram of a ship. 
and I'm going to draw what the two vectors are that represent its displacement. So the first one is that it leaves St. John's Harbor and heads 27 kilometers to the east. Well, before I even do anything, I should make sure I remind who's ever looking at this that we are dealing with standard direction, so anything I draw to the left will be west, and anything to the right will be east. Up is north, and down is south. And I'm also going to say that north will be positive and east will be positive. So I will draw a vector that represents 27 kilometers to the east. And then adding tip to tail with that, I need to draw one that's 36 kilometers south. So again, I don't need to draw a perfect scale diagram here. I'm just going to draw one that needs to be longer than the 27 kilometer one so that it's roughly to scale. So I draw a vector going down in the southern direction, just making sure that it is clearly longer than the first, because 36 is bigger than 27. And now, my displacement, if I go back to that definition for displacement, I need to remember that it's a straight line vector that goes from the starting position to the final position. So I'm going to use a dotted line to represent that once again. And my starting position was right where the boat started from, and a dotted line goes right to the end there, to its final position. So that dotted line now represents my final displacement. Oops. So this is my first displacement, what I'll call D1. That's my 27 kilometers. This is what I'm going to call D2. That's my 36 kilometers. And this new one here, I'm going to call dt, where the t just stands for total, my total displacement in this case. So now I've got a diagram that represents basically everything I need, but there's a few things I need to figure out. I need to figure out how long this new vector dt is. And if I'm going to state its direction, I'm going to also need to know something about this angle. And we typically use the Greek letter theta, which is something you might have seen in your trigonometry units in the past. It's like a zero with a line through the middle of it. That theta, Greek letter, will represent the angle. And if I can find that angle, it'll help me talk about what direction that's pointed in. So for dt, for the length of dt, we're going to use, and I'll just write a short form for it, Pythagorean theorem. Because we've got a right angle triangle and we're looking for the hypotenuse side. So, in other words, c squared is always equal to a squared plus b squared. What does that tell us in our case? Well, it tells us that dt squared is equal to d1 squared plus d2 squared. Or in other words, dt on its own is going to be equal to, well, that's 27 squared plus 36 squared and then if I square root that whole thing, that will give me the value for dt. And when I do that, I get about 45 kilometers. Approximately 45 kilometers in total from the harbor when we go straight from the start to the finish. But that's just the distance. I still need to take a second and figure out the direction. For the direction, we just need to review a little bit of our Sokotoa training. So, if we want to find the angle in this case, we know the opposite side and the adjacent side in our triangle. And we're trying to find the angle inside. Well, the trig ratio that uses opposite and adjacent is tan. So just to, for your notes, we're going to say for theta, we're going to use Sokotoa. 
And what will that look like? Well, in our case, we're going to say that tan theta is always equal to, remember, opposite over adjacent. And specifically in our case, that's our D2 vector, which was 36 kilometers long. You don't need to worry about units. In this case, we'll talk more in class about when units are most important in our solutions. But for now, we have our opposite side. We divide by 27, which are, is our adjacent side. And that is what gives us tan theta. And so really, The more compact way to do this, if I want to do this just in one step, is actually not quite to write it this way, but I'm going to just jump straight to the fact that theta is going to be the tan inverse of 36 over 27. And that is something that most of you can probably do in one step in your calculator. And when we do that, we should get about, just reviewing my notes, about 53 degrees. And so just down below all of this, we can write a final statement and say, therefore, the final displacement is about 45 kilometers. And now we have an angle that helps us state our final direction. So it's like we're pointing straight to the east and then turning 53 degrees towards the south. So I'm going to write that in brackets and put east, or E for east, 53 degrees, and then an S for south. That is our final dis the total displacement in this case. For this example four now, we've got an ant that's crawling 65 centimeters to the right, and then 15 centimeters down, and then another 30 centimeters to the right. And again, we're trying to find total displacement. So we can draw some vectors to represent this motion. And again, we don't need to draw them perfectly to scale, but we should try and draw them roughly to scale. So vectors that we know are larger than others should reflect that in our diagram. So if I draw a vector first to represent the 65 centimeters to the right, that should be my longest vector that I'm going to draw by far. And then 15 centimeters down, well, that should be about a quarter of what I drew before in a vector that goes tip to tail going downwards from there. So something that's about like that. And then another 30 centimeters, about half the length of the first. Something like that in the right direction. So those are my three displacements, 65 centimeters, then another 15 centimeters, and then another 30 centimeters. And my displacement is going to look a little bit strange in this case. I'll use a dotted line again to represent it. I go back to the start and go straight to the finish point. So that dotted line that I've drawn now represents the total displacement of my ant. And you can see now the geometry looks a little bit weird. We don't have a regular right triangle like we had before where we could use things like Pythagorean theorem and our SOHCAHTOA ratios. But we can deal with that. Because remember, we can arrange and add these vectors in any order. So even though the ant chose to move in, the, in that particular pattern, we can rearrange the vectors in a different order. So I'm going to redraw this diagram beside in a little bit different way. So I go back and I, I start by drawing my 65 centimeters to the right. And then tip to tail with that, I'm going to put my other right hand vector. So now from there, it's another 30 centimeters or so to the right. I'm going to put those two right beside one another. And then I'll save that 15 centimeters down for last and add that one tip to tail at the end. So I've still got the same exact three vectors all pointing in the same directions they were. I've just added them in a different order. But now, when I draw my dotted line that connects them and represents that displacement, I've got a nice right angle triangle again. So I'll let you try and finish this one off, because from here, it's just another case of using Pythagorean theorem, and then a little bit of a SOHCAHTOA ratio, specifically tangent ratio again, to figure out the angle. So remember, if we're going to want to state the direction, we'll need to know what angle we've turned in the downwards direction away from the right-hand direction. And we'll also need to keep in mind what these lengths are. We have a 65 and then another 30 in that direction. So 
that should be a hint as to how long that total right-hand vector is going to be, and then a 15 centimeters down from there. So if those are our dimensions, that becomes a problem that you could have solved in grade 10 trigonometry unit in math class. So I'll leave that one for you guys to finish off. As well, when we get to class time, we're going to talk about how we can subtract vectors, which uses some very similar principles to what we've already been doing with adding vectors. We'll also do an example where our vectors don't always have to go straight to the right or up or down. Sometimes the original vectors we're given will also be on an angle. And so we'll look at some more challenging examples that deal with that fact as well.